What? Y'all are starting without me, bro? What? All right, let's get it. Some Lost Box action. You know I'm down for that. <clears throat> Triple Comfy. one has gone. Sableye Bench, though. Got the threat of turn two Sableye. Or wait, let's see. Yeah, Vacuum. Triple Comfy Chorus. The turn two Sableye threat is there. Does Actually, I don't even know. I don't think Silva does. I don't think Silva plays Jirachi. Honestly, that is like Lost Box. See, if... Zard starts playing Jirachi again. I think Lost Box gets kind of cornered. Um, uh, I think Lost Box gets... Like, it's hard for... Like, Sableye is such a powerful tool against Charizard. Um, yeah, Sableye is such a ridiculously powerful tool against Charizard right now because people aren't running Jirachi. Not everyone, but a lot of people cut it. But it's, if they go back to Jirachi... But it would take, like, Lost Box being, like, super good. Or, like, like proving that it's good to, like, really warrant it, but... Um. <clears throat> oh wait, did we? Was this prediction for the last one? Shoot, what was this prediction for? What was this? Pre was this prediction for the the previous match? Because who won that? The player on the left won, right? Because I do it by left and right. Last match was yeah, Lugia was on the right. All right, left, and then new prediction. Did it not work? Oh, okay, hang on, I gotta reset my thing. Dragon Ball next format, Jirachi is a must. That's not what Jirachi does. Jirachi does not prevent from, only, Jirachi only prevents placement of damage counters from, um, basic Pokemon, yeah. Mist Energy still works though. So we do have some Temple of Sin in the format. Dragon Ball, if Dragon Ball is consistent enough, Dragon Ball is kind of be kind of crazy to be honest. Rabska's time to shine. It is the Rabska's time to shine. All right, Nest Ball into Ultra Ball. That's not Poffin, but the Ultra Ball can get Luminion here, which I assume is what we're going to see, but we'll see. The Sableye for the Laos might go crazy on this next turn. Yep, Luminion. Oh, I don't know. Interesting. Not, uh, not going for the. What was the other option to go for there? <laughs> I'm tr I'm trolling that. Oh, for the Arvin. Laz's hand was so good. <clears throat> yeah, the, uh, I guess the hand. Oh, it already has the four shield stone in hand. Okay, that makes sense then. I feel like from from Silva then. Already have the four shields on the hand, so you're hoping to draw like more. Well, yeah, there's very little value to get off it then. You'd still need a pop in here for sure, but well, there's Charmander, but no Bidu for second Pidgey. Yeah, no. Oh, vacuum in the hand here for Galaz. That's one of the things pieces you're looking for to get to that ten. Very possible. That is very doable with the triple comfy start. By Heavy Ball. We're ninja set up now. Manaphy is down though here for Alex. So protected from that. There's a Colrus. Need a couple switch cards and a target. That's two Colrus in that Colrus, I believe. By Dark Energy. So is playing Roaring Moon, it looks like. I would assume that means we have Roaring Moon in there. Switch card is in hand. Also a Mirage Gate. Another Mirage Gate to the hand. And a switch. That's it. That's it. That's 10. No, no, no. Yes, because we have the, the uh, emergency board as the target for the... We would like a different target probably, but hey, we'll settle. We'll settle for that. That's fine. So the Sableye's happening. KO uh, Pidgey. And then honestly, I don't even know what you can. You could KO the Manaphy to have the Greninja threat on the next turn. I almost like that, to be honest. We'll see. Gate happening. Oh, should have probably played the gate before. Well, already retreated. 
Honestly, I like, kind of like the water energy to the ninja instead. That way you're closer to the Greninja threat. KO, like, I like to see like KO, Pidgey, KO, Manaphy, water to ninja. I don't hate this as well, though. Give you the pivot to work with. Looks like maybe lost hitting a super rod. There we go. That's 10. Sableye is in. Turn two. Sableye coming in from Galaz. Pidgey's definitely dying. The question is, do you KO the active Charmander or the Manaphy? I like the Manaphy KO, I think. I think I like the Manaphy KO. Well, let's see what Galaz likes. Okay. I guess that makes more sense, right? KO the bench Charmander. Put one on the Manaphy makes more sense than KO the active Charmander for sure. Does it? Yeah, it does, right? Yeah. I still like the Manaphy KO, to be honest. Um, cause I like the, I like opening the, the threat of the Greninja. Because if Candy's hard KOs your active here, recovering Sableye might be tough, especially if it's comboed with like an Iono. But getting having the Greninja threat and the Sableye threat on board sounds pretty sick. Um, yeah, we'll see. I think I already see a Super Rod from Alex. Honestly, Zard might start need to play in Jirachi. Like, between Tina and this deck, you might need to start playing Jirachi, to be honest. Especially if Lost Box catches some, catch, like, starts catching popularity, like, starts getting more popular. That'll be the big question if it does or doesn't, but. I don't know. Tina's maybe good enough to warrant it, though. Tina might be good enough to warrant, uh. Might be good enough and popular enough to warrant just putting Jirachi in just for that, to be honest. Zard should probably concede, right? No, Zard is a great comeback deck. You have plenty of time. This this game is definitely winnable. Alex just needs to stabilize and start putting on the pressure on the loss on the deck, but start drawing prize cards, finding hand disruption cards. Definitely no need to concede. Has a Radzard. Andy Charizard. It's going to be two to the active, one to the Radzard on the bench. Uh, a good play from Galaz here would be to use Sableye again and go with... Oh, four Seals coming into play here as well. I wonder what that's going to be for. Iono, maybe? Yeah, I up the Iono. I wonder... I guess, like, I like the Rad's art as a good... Um... Miss is maybe more relevant, though. Miss is good against Devo and Mirror and Roaring Moon. Jirachi's good. Like, you, if you're going up against a lost Tina deck, you'd rather have Jirachi than Mist. Um, ideally both, I guess, but that's a lot of space. Um, Jirachi's definitely better against Tina than what's it called is Mist. Not sure, to be honest. I guess it's like there's other matchups too besides Lost Zone decks. The Roaring Moon deck, you want the Mist, obviously. Mirror Match, you want the Mist over Jirachi as well. I guess it depends where Team Devo is trending, maybe more so than anything. If T Team Devo's are... If T Devo stocks are up in Mirror, then you probably want it. Other decks play Devo as well, I guess, so... Maybe Mist is better. I guess you could try and fit both. Well, I don't know how you do that. You'd have to, like, cut Eerie for sure. All right. First knockout here for Silva. Now we're over to Galaz. Hand is not great. Hand is not great for Galaz. Uh, it does have double gate, so it's really just like missing a Pokemon to work with. And apparently does not like that choice there. Gets rid of the crammed gets. Super Rod. Maybe you should have even played one of those gates initially to shuffle the deck, because there's like a Chorus and the Roaring Moon on the bottom of the deck, to be honest. Comes a Retreat. Yeah, Galaz might whiff and attack this turn. We'll see. Here we go. Oh, the Mist is really good in this matchup too, right? It does stop the Roaring Moon. Because Nick... Uh, yeah, because Galaz is playing uh, the Moon as a way to KO Charizard. Some people play, like, Grass stuff. There's other stuff. Has the Four Shields on in hand as well, though. So, like, if you can get a... Uh, a V Pokemon here, you can start to unlock your potential on the turn. Gives up the Nest Ball. Wait, what do we keep? I'm so curious now. Lightning energy over Nest Ball? 
Wait. Does that make sense? I feel like Nest Ball was going crazy here. Oh, we got another one. What do we, we keep over the Nest Ball? An energy to use Greninja instead of Nest Ball for our attacker? There's the moon. Now we're getting the moon now. I don't know. I felt like just moon KO there was pretty good. <laughs> like, and we had that with the Nest Ball. Has four energy to grab as well, which is super nice here because you can end up with an extra energy on the Comfy. And don't have to use a Super Rod yet. But you might go ahead and use a Super Rod just to have energy in your deck to be able to use with Greninja moving forward. Are we going back in? I'm oh, going to try and conserve the gate. There's another switch cart left here for Galah. So trying to just hit the dark energy, it looks like. I think did. Oh, Colrus. That's even better. What do we got? Did not get the energy, but I don't think we're complaining. We got some good stuff here, though. A rod. Oh, is that the Raikou as well? You could bench Raikou and attach the four seal stone and leave it in play. Here comes the next Mirage Gate. Maybe you should bench the Raikou and get some energy on the Raikou. Because you have game by going Raikou KO Luminion. Oh yeah, you definitely set up Raikou here. You literally win with Raikou KO Luminion on the next turn. There's no way a collapse is happening. Maybe a Turo. Also going to recover the save line and have that as a threat. Wait, are we not benching Raikou? Is that not a Raikou is also a question I guess I have. Bench Raikou set up Raikou seems too good if you have Prime Catcher left in the deck. Not going to do it though. As we have an attached for turn, we could attach for turn to the Raikou as well, right? Just still an energy in hand to attach. But getting that lightning on the Raikou seems better than... Well, maybe there's a lightning in hand? Maybe, I don't know. Psychic to the active. Switch cart. Maybe it's not a Raikou. If that's Raikou for Shield Stone in hand, we should definitely put both those in play. And attach to it. Have we attached yet? We haven't attached yet, right? Isn't that hands? Is it hands? I thought it was Raikou. Double retreat? No, switch carded. Dude, I don't know. I own a Roxanne here. It still gives Silva a pretty solid chance. Maybe it wasn't Iron Hands. Maybe I'm trolling. I, I thought it looked like Raikou. But maybe I, I could be the one trolling. Isn't that Raikou? I can't tell for sure. It is Raikou. That's what I'm saying. We have Raikou for Sealstone in hand. Maybe there's not a four seal stone. But even then, don't you just bench Raikou because you have game by KO, KO and the Luminion? I feel like Galash should have benched Raikou here. And we didn't attach for turn yet either. Some super rods and a gear. Yeah, it was a Raikou. There's also an Iron Hands at hand though. And there is the four seal stone as well. Yeah, I definitely should have benched it, right? There's no reason not to have benched it with four seal stone. Not that I can think of anyways. I don't think Galaz is worried about... Because if... Hmm. I don't think you're that worried about, like, Counter Catcher Zard or Prime Catcher Zard KO your Raikou. When you have the moon still in play, then the moon can kill the Luminion to win, right? So... <laughs> Silva plays the Eerie and then... Wait, was that even correct from Silva? To, if C Silva had an Arvin in hand, shouldn't he have played the Arvin instead? I just assumed he played Eerie because that's all he had. I didn't really look at his hand. But I feel like you should have played to set up more. There's Charmanders in the hand, though. You, know, you have to have at least one of these things. Just a knockout, the only Pokemon in play is the Radzard. So even just Raikou KO Radzard probably just wins the game here for Galaz. I don't know if there's a gate left, though. So that's why getting the energy attachment for turn to the Raikou felt like a pretty big deal, right? There is a gate left, I do see it. Goes for the boss. Oh, that should be game, right? Raikou, four seals on finds gate, gate the lightning. There should be a lightning left in deck, I'm almost positive. Catch for turn. Boss KO'd Luminion. Yep. There we go. All right. Game one goes to Glaz. 
The Turbo Lost Box. Getting it done. That turn two Sableye. Doing what it does best. That's like another thing with this matchup as well. Is Charizard wants to go second. Because you just want to stabilize. You want to set up. Stabilize. <clears throat> Actually, I honestly would be curious about that. Are, what are what are people cho people are choosing second, right? Or am I trolling with that take? Because whenever I play Charizard and go first, it feels terrible. So I've been choosing second. We're choosing second, right? What do you choose, chat? Are you going first or second with Charizard? I'm going second. Lawson is choosing first. Yeah, in this matchup, I would go first as Lawson, which means it's correct to go first as Charizard. Um, wait, you would go second in this matchup? In this matchup, I would go first as Charizard, I feel like. I feel like you're supposed to go first as Charizard in this matchup. Because of the threat of the turn to Sableye if they go first. But am I trolling for that take? Or are we supposed to go second as Charizard still? Let's see what Alex thinks. Silva here lost game one, so they'll choose. They get to choose now. Like blind, I go second as Charizard. But in this matchup, I feel like you go first. I could be wrong though, because like, and maybe you still just go second and hope the the lost one players a slow start. Let's see. Prize cards, one gate, one rod. The gate is in the last couple of prize cards. That's kind of unfortunate. But maybe a heavy ball gets played for Galaz and things get shuffled up. What about Silva? The Roxanne's prize. The mist is also prized again. The mist is big. The mist is huge. Silva did choose first. Is it Pidgey Pass? There's a nest ball. We're not on Pidgey Pass, but it's not looking good. That's why you choose second, right? But in this matchup, do you choose second? Maybe you do, because this start sucks. Should we have just gone second? Like, play our Arvin, play our Poffin. Sure, we're scared of the turn two Sableye, but like, let me get my Manaphy down and I'm cooking. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Is Silva's hand that bad that we're thinking about like a a Roto? It gotta go with Charmander, right? It's gotta be a Charmander. Second seems correct. I mean, watching this game play out, it definitely seems correct, but This is definitely a matchup where I'm a little bit more unsure about first versus second. Um, but I think I I think I would still just argue second, man. You just want to set up. You just want to set up. Cramco Pidgey on turn one would be a bad start for Silva. Cram Charmander would be even worse, right? Cram the Charmander. The thing is, like, Galaz definitely wants to try and buy time to get to Sableye. So Cramco Charmander is that much better. Uh, it does involve finding your prime catcher, but... Because then if you delay the Trimanders, the Trimanders got to come back and play, which means you definitely are going to have Sableye targets as the game progresses. We'll see. Ooh. Colors off the rip. That's a good start. Artisan? Got to give up the hands here, I feel like. Artisan finds Cram or a follow-up Comfy. Question is water or Super Rod. You always keep the gate. I think the hands bite to the dust. I think it's, yeah, you keep water, you keep super rod. Gives up the water to keep the super rod. Probably plays three water. There's one in hand. Comfy's happening. Honestly, the hand's not that good. We need some, some more draw power here. The hand's a little slow. We have one more Pokemon. Only one switch card maneuver in retreating. Bunch of gates. Prime eerie hand. Prime hand to be eerie'd. I wonder what these cards. I want to know what these two cards are here. I think you really want to go aggressive for the cram attack, but I just want to play the game. Goodbye, Comfy. For what? What's the trade off?
I don't know what it is. What is it? I want to know what it is. Here comes the artisan. Doing the price checking thing. Nest? Was it Nest? Nest is pretty good here. That becomes Raikou, which becomes four steel stone. It was a switch cart. That makes sense, right? I think that makes sense, yeah. Over the Kung Fu. But now we have to get a Kung Fu off this artisan. And then this Kung Fu has to get us a cram, ideally. In the tank a bit here. Checking the final prize cards. Gates and rods and supporters. Prize one chorus, I think. The boss is there. The prime catcher's there. One gate, one chorus are like the important things. All right. One comfy. It has to be. That's not true. No, it has to be an out. It could be Greninja, I guess. You ideally, you just want a cram attack here, though, I think. Honestly, the hand is pretty weak. Even if we get off this cram attack. I also don't like that switch card use. We should have retreated first, I think. We should have retreated first. Because you don't have infinite. Uh, You have t a couple energy in hand to work with. Am I trolling for that? No, we should always retreat first, right? Also, there's the iron bundle in hand, so if it is a cram, we can cram KO the Charmander here. I wonder... I've seen some lists with only one Psychic energy. I wonder if Galaz only plays one Psychic. Or is the other Psychic prized? There's a cram, and here comes the iron bundle. There is the bundle. Lone Charmander goes down. Catch a treat. Here comes the cram punch. Not like not like a ridiculously powerful hand, though, to be honest, for uh Gala. So plenty of plenty of time for Silva to come back into this one. Not in a terrible spot at all. Definitely want Candy Pidgeot and ideally just to get down some Charmanders. But oh. I guess like call for family is a thing here. That looks like uh what Alex is going for. Oh, Artisan first. Artisan before playing Iona was a little bit weird, though. I feel like you'd want to drop, go, want the opportunity for more basics. That feels a little weird here from... Uh, from Silva. I assume Artisan is what's being used here, right? <clears throat> Goes for Charmander. I mean, maybe you're already getting everything you want. Maybe you don't want any more than three. Then call for family for what? Manaphy Charmander? I don't know, though. But don't you want, like, a second Pidgey? Or even maybe Bidoof? Like, some draw support set up as well? Maybe Alex was checking something in the deck before committing to a supporter for turn? Because I think there's Arvin and Iono in the hand. Maybe not though. Maybe it's just Iono. Oh, has Candy's Archer Million in the hand? Or maybe thinking about just using Call for Family. Oh, I don't know. Just going to get. Or maybe it was checking for Manaphy, but Manaphy's not prized. Manaphy Doof. Manaphy Doof would be okay. You get Prime Catchered though. Greninja draw there from uh, Galaz is super good. Starting to get some draw power cooking. Not much else going on in the hand though. Raikou, four systems on the bottom of the deck, though. But there's no course on the bottom of the deck, so you don't really want to shuffle the deck over that, I don't think. Another Pidgey found here for Silva. And then I assume we're going to see a call for family to get us Manaphy Charmander at the very least, but it looks like Ultra Ball's happening as well. What was that Iono Arvin? I kept the Luminion inside the Iono is interesting. I feel like you'd just be playing Iono next turn anyways. So, gonna fill the bench here, it looks like. But this Ultra Ball is maybe better to grab B Barrel next turn, right? 
Maybe Beauty of Surprise? I don't think so, though. So just going for the full bench here. I wonder what the hand is then. Because we could have gone... No, I guess this kind of makes sense. I guess this makes sense. That's a lot of Pokemon on the bench. That will take a little while to evolve. That can be Sableye, though. Which is not good. That's a lot of free prize cards. Going for the shuffle here, actually, from... I'm actually not sure that's correct. I almost feel like maybe just using... For Ninja to try and naturally... To just try and, try and draw into a... Polar made more sense there, to be honest. I'm not sure. Um... Oh, he top-decked Colrus? Oh, okay, never mind. That makes sense then. I can see the top-deck. Then it definitely makes sense to probably shuffle it up. All your gates are on the bottom. Probably not going to see a Sableye. Well, hold on. We just drew Vacuum Switch Cart. Hold up. We're actually pretty close to a Sableye. Yeah. Oh, there's a Switch. No, wait. Gives up on it. No Sableye? We're close. We're actually pretty close to it. Wait, maybe we still have it in hand already. Oh, gives up the switch. We still have... Maybe we're just not going for it here. Maybe just build up the loss out and chill. Wait, didn't we just have it? Isn't there a nest ball? In Wouldn't there have been three switch cards in hand? Psychic was prized, right? Oh, wait, that's true. Either Psychic's prized or... Um... Either Psychic Surprise or he only plays one. I forgot about that. That's right. We did loss on the Psychic. Sableye might just not be an option this whole game. I'm not sure about that. That's definitely the only Psychic? Yeah, it might be. Yeah, it might become... It might start to get pretty tough to actually draw prize cards here. If... Uh, well, actually, Alex hasn't found the Mist yet. So that's going to be a big deal. Now the Luminian's in play for Raikou to go after as well. <laughs> what, what, what did we take over the Psychic? We took the Cram, right? Which is probably cr fine, to be honest. Um, he's in a great position, though. It's okay. I honestly don't think this position is that ridiculously good for Galaz with the lack of with the lack of Sableye, potentially. This isn't that good of a spot. You're ahead, but, like... How do you get your last couple... I mean, all right, there's there, you definitely have your routes, but once the hand disruption starts hitting, I don't know. I get a little worried. One psychic is crazy. Oh, you only need to save by like once in most games. I guess in mirror match you want to do it a couple times, but as Candy Pidgey Candy Zard and Iono for next turn. Okay, I guess that's why we had to get rid of the other Iono. We had like literally perfect for everything else. Pidgey being set up as an attacker. I don't hate that for sure. The Mrs. Prize. Yeah, so for Galatia, I think you're looking for you're looking for that moon knockout, right? You just want to go moon KO here. That's gotta be what we want here. Let's see. Nest ball's in hand. I don't see any gates. Have some switch cards. Have a super rod. Doesn't commit the nest yet. You can also just like do nothing for a turn, I think, here as Galaz, and that would be fine. Yeah, you can also just, like, do nothing, I'm pretty sure. We'd like to Raikou first, then Moon. I mean, the big question would be, does Galaz know about the uh, the Mist Energy, right? Because if you know the Mist Energy exists, you definitely want to Moon first, right? Um, Before the Mist hits the board. Because then you're going to be in trouble. So I think you got you to do go with the... Especially if the follow-up attacker setup is Pidgeot, right? Because then if if because Raikou just KOs Pidgeot if it attacks, responds and KOs the Moon. You could even go as far as benching the Raikou and play ahead of time, right? I think so. Gate still at the top. Who doesn't actually retreat that comfy there? Interesting. I feel like Galaz is not going to take a knockout here. We'll see how the rest of the turn plays out. Doesn't have a single gate yet. The pro the the scary thing if Galaz doesn't take a knockout here though is that's when. Alright, we're not done yet though. We're going into the Poke Gear. 
<clears throat> this is like a if if Gloss doesn't take a KO here, Eerie becomes really really good. Oh, it's a whiff. I think Gloss is whiffing the attack this turn. Was that a Mew X in the hand? Skateboard. Oh, we got the board as well. It's kind of broken. All right, one last search. I think that's a Colrus. We need a switch card on top of everything else now, though. And if we whiff, the Eerie is like prime to destroy this hand. I see. I think it's all there, actually. I think I saw a gate switch. There's gate switch, yeah. That's it. The moon is on the way. You could even you could definitely bench the Raikou. You could bench the Raikou. Oh yeah, you only have two bench spaces. You could bench the Raikou. Should you bench the Raikou? Rod's coming in to get the energy for the moon. Moon gets a knockout. You ever get back uh cram? Is that ever a thing you want again? Cram? I don't know. Final thought on lightning versus water. Oh, you always want the lightning in the deck though for the Raikou later. Not the dark in hand for the attachment. We haven't attached yet. Not that switch cart. Uh, do you bench the Raikou or do you wait? Nope, just gonna wait. Okay. I mean, I don't hate that. I mean, it's like one more card that could like, you could mess up with law zoning those stuff, right? Like that's always like the, the thing is like, what if you go Comfy and you see prime catcher Raikou? You're like, well, well, the Pidgeot is in the active this turn, but. But you do, by not having a two prizer in play, you do give yourself like an extra turn. Also, it doesn't become like the target for the next KO. Um, now it's losable. I like a bunch of hundred percent. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I don't. I just feel like you just put it in bunch and just go. Um, also gives you the fleet footed as like plus one, right? To have in play for like more resources. I don't know. Not benching is more turns to win. Yeah, but it's one more card you need. Like you know, Silva's just gonna spam Iono you now. Like you know, Silva's plan. Like is this. Silva's plan is telegraphed. It's literally play Iono. Um, it also makes a four seal stun it out as well. Yeah. As long as you have Super Odd left to recover it, if it gets Gus KO, then I think that's probably fine. Also, the. Yeah. I don't know. It even becomes like a better play as well, I guess, because you Silva's play might be to attack with. Um, Silva's play might become to attack with Pidgeot. So, with that in mind. So went into quick search for B barrel, use B barrel. That's interesting. I thought there was an Iono in hand. Oh, has Zard though. So Zard will be attacking this turn for sure, right? We're never attacking with the Raikou anymore. If he gets Gus KO, you just moon again for him. I'm saying like before you get to use it. So basically, um, <clears throat> um, like if when, so Alex is going to go KO moon. If you have Raikou on your bench and don't use it for a turn, then the turn after that, Alex can boss KO it. So you would need to recover it with a super rod. Is what I is what I meant. Is what I was saying when I meant what I was saying when I said. It draw immediately into the nest ball though. So we have it. Uh, and we know it's on the bottom of the deck. So we can like leave it there. And then we don't have to shuffle yet. It's close though. I like the idea of benching Raikou. Because I feel like it gives you the aggressive. Like it makes it easier just to win next turn. Um, especially with like the possibility of the Pidgeot being the attacker, but it's probably pretty close to be honest. There's a knockout. The missed energy is finally going to be found for Silva, which could still matter, I guess, because you can, you could miss energy as Zard and then Roaring Moon knockout active isn't a possibility, I guess. I forget if there's an energy on the bottom of the deck or not. Has the Roxanne too? I feel like with the Roxanne, maybe you just commit the Raikou. I feel like with the Roxanne play, you maybe just commit the Raikou, to be honest. Like, just go Nest Ball, Raikou, play Roxanne. You're going to see so many cards this turn, like... Also, like, it opens up the four Seal Stone to lead to a Roar and Moon knockout, right? Like, you could still go Roar and Moon knockout. Oh, but maybe that's a reason to keep the Nest Ball in the deck, though, right? I guess keeping the Nest Ball in the deck for that reason could be good. There's the four Seal Stone, though. It's in the hand. Actually, Galas had game if he Nest Balled for the Raikou. So close. There's the Raikou. There's the Forest. Forest for Super Rod. Because there might only be one energy left right now. There's two, but that works. 
Super Rod, and the dub is there. Gate. Punch the Mew. Plays the Prime Catcher. And that's oh wait, this is two oh. I thought we were going to one and one. I didn't even realize Galaz just won right there. <laughs> I literally did not even realize. Um, did find an early chorus and found a nest ball here. Probably gonna go ahead and just get another comfy start. Really have that loss home. Oh yeah, prediction. Let me get a prediction up. Our predictions up. Final prediction here for the finals. On the left side, we have Lost Zone Box. On the right side, we have Charizard. I guess some things about both decks. Left side, Lost Box, Morin Moon, Raikou. Pretty aggressive build. Um, did just beat a Charizard in top four. And uh, on the right side, Pedro plays Heroes Cape and Eerie, I believe. So it has the text for that. I'm playing Charizard. Charizard, you should go second. It depends on the matchup. Uh, first against Chi and Pao. Second against probably everything else. Probably. Doesn't Pedro play Jirachi? Good question. Pedro does play Mist Energy. Uh, Pedro plays Mist Energy, so I would assume... If we should 34 months there, Fuzzle. I would assume there's no Jirachi. That's also a, a good point, though. I don't know if there is, to be honest. I assume no. You push the prime sub there, uh, Machiavelli. Welcome to the right pack. For all the crumpets, we got plenty of tea. You can throw with the prize checking. Yeah, because of the mist energy, I would assume no Jirachi, but I don't know actually, to be honest. Uh, the mist energy is a big deal though to shut down the one hit KO potential um, on your Charizard though. So the mist energy is a big deal still in the matchup. I think you'd rather have. Jirachi over Mist for this matchup, but still a useful card. The cape? I don't know. The cape could get be cheesy, I guess. The cape could be a little cheesy. All right, here comes another Comfy. Dark Energy and what? Lightning. Attach the Lightning and pass. Set up for the next round on the Retreat. So Pedro here. We gotta get... Two Charmanders, ideally. Um, cape to put Bird out of Raikou round sounds hot. That would be pretty good, actually. Yeah, the cape for that would be good. Now, there is vacuums in uh, the build here from Galaz. Ultra Ball coming in, getting rid of a Super Rod. I wonder if this is going to go look for Luminian. Unfortunately for Pedro, the Luminian's prize. Also, opening Radzard means Cleffa's not an option for Pedro to draw cards. Wait, does... Is there a Cleffa in Pedro's build? I don't remember seeing the Cleffa, actually. There might not be. I assume there is a Cleffa. Yeah, I assume there's got to be a Cleffa. But I guess we'll find out here shortly. <clears throat> Cleffa seems pretty bad in this matchup, unless there's Jirachi. Um, I mean, it's not great, but... Also, not playing the game is not great. <clears throat> so, between playing the game and not playing the game, I'm, I think we're playing the game here. The only difference between uh, Matt and Dual Matt Dragon Shield sleeves is the interior color, and they feel different. They definitely feel different to shuffle. I prefer Matt sleeves, personally. I know some people who prefer the feel of Dual Mats. That's a pretty bad start here from Pedro, but... Okay, so it is bad, but there's not a whole lot for Galas to take advantage of, right? Like, what is the best play that Galas could do here? Probably Roaring Moon. Um, the best play here from Galas. Although this kind of does give Galas like a free turn to like build up the Law Zone to play for the Ninja. And um, it, yeah, it gives him a free turn to build up towards the Law Zone for a Greninja play. Or a... Gotta get rid of one more besides the water, right? Yeah. Or a Sableye play, right? So you kind of get like a free turn. To build up towards that. But I feel like the best play here, honestly, would be... It'd be a pretty tough to pull off, I feel like. But if you could knock out the roadie with... I don't know. What is the card called? Would that be the best play? Knock out Rotom with... Um, 
Dude, what is the card called? <laughs> I forget. Uh, Roaring Moon. That sounds pretty good to me. That's a lot. That's how, that's how, just getting two prize cards off the rip like that would be pretty good, I think. We're a little ways away from that, though. Like, I know it exists, but I don't remember what to call it. Um, the Lost also can't take a knockout this turn with uh, Raikou. Or Steel Stone's gone now as well. What was that card that was kept? The Bundle? Bundle, bundle Punch Rotom definitely seems decent. There's the Bundy Punch. There's the Switch. Hasn't attached for a turn. Could have attached to a Comfy to set that up, but chose not to. I think there was two Water in hand and a Dark. So maybe trying to keep it. Well, you could have attached one of the Waters, maybe. Only an Eerie. And it's... Ooh, the Prime Catcher is caught. I was going to say, it only gets rid of a Super Rod, but actually it's the Prime Catcher there as well. Prime Catcher is a pretty big deal. That's a pretty powerful card. But if Pedro has no other basic Pokemon here, I don't know how powerful that is. I don't know how big of a difference that makes. Looks like Petrucci's gonna... Pedro's gonna write down the whole hand. <laughs> Taking some notes? All right. I feel like this game maybe has just turned into an... Oh, wait, hold up. I say that. There's two Poffin in hand. I thought that was maybe gonna be the whole turn, but I take it back. There's two Poffin in the hand. We're cooking. We're cooking. One rod already in the lost. Should still be fine, though. The deck plays four super rods, so... Yeah, for a second there, I was like, all right, is that going to be just draw three with Rody again? But has double Poffin, so... The Manders are out. The question is, where do you go from here? Do you want to put yourself in Sableye range? The hand from Galaz is not that good at building up towards a Sableye play. The Cole should have to do a lot of work, for sure. You do need... You can't... You probably can't survive this game without B-Barrel or Pidgeot at all. Um... And valuing the double Pidgey here to play around that boss in the hand from uh, from Galaz. So didn't want the lone Pidgey to get boss KO'd. Really wants to get that candy Pidgey out, out here. So goes for the double Pidgey. Makes sense. Could have gone Bidoof Pidgey maybe. I think the B-Barrel is actually prized, so you probably never want to do that. Uh, but Sableye here can still knock out double Pidgey here. And I'm sure that's what Galaz is going to go for here is Sableye. Sableye KO double Pidgey. Put two somewhere. I don't know where you put it. Put it somewhere. I see a switch card. That's a start. Nest Ball you don't need. You'll probably give up the Nest Ball and the Poff in here. But I don't think we're getting a 10 off of this hand, to be honest. I think it might just be a Cram KO, get two prize cards, which is still chill. Um, which is still pretty chill. Um, oh, I guess I didn't even realize that no Manaphy was gotten. Ooh, was that? That sounds a little risky, to be honest. No Manaphy was gotten there from uh, Pedro. Giving the Artisan over to Pedro now as well. What is even the grab here? Save light? Do you just get save light and put it on the bench? Third comfy? Okay. But you do give the Artisan over to Pedro to get Manaphy now. I don't know if I like that. And I also don't know if... Did Galas telegraph that Cramorant's prize... Or that Greninja's prize? Or did Pedro just like make that... Call... Did Pedro just make the call, I think you're Greninja's prized? Or did Galaz use a Nest Ball at some point when Greninja would have been the best play and just didn't do it? I don't know if it was telegraphed or not that it was prized. But Pedro chose... Oh, is Manaphy prized also as well, maybe? Maybe maybe Pedro's... Manaphy is prized. Um, no more Colrus now, right? Unless one was pulled off the prize card, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. So I think we're out of Colrus here. Quick search is coming in. There's the Artisan for... Or Artisan's coming, I think, for the Manaphy. So the Manaphy was in there. Pedro, uh, Pedro chose to risk it, though. Chose to risk the no. I don't think you can get the Greninja play off. And with the hand that Galaz did have, it did seem unlikely. Because there was one water in the loss on two waters in hand. So Galaz would have needed Greninja, Super Rod, Mirage Gate, move active. Um, so I kind of like that call from Pedro, actually, to be honest, I think. Um, there's the Iono. Still has the Quick Search to work with, I believe. Charmeleon's in play, so Candy's art is uh, a is live here, and definitely wants it. You don't want to give too many free turns to Galaz here. Uh, probably pretty unlikely to have whiffed the Candy's art here with Quick Search still around. And I think I do see a Charizard getting lined up, so that should lead to a Candy's art. Um, I'm curious if uh, Pedro does play the. Plays the, the Palpat or not. Because does play Eerie. Already has used the Eerie. Um, another Eerie would be, could be devastating. Running uh, Galaz out of further resources. Just going to settle for two fires to the Charizard. Could have put like 
one on the Radzard, maybe to get an early Radzard, it's earlier Radzard attack, or even one to the Pidgeot to have the potential to attack with Pidgeot. Pidgeot not a great attacker though because of the Raikou. Um, has the collapse as well to remove a liability from the Sableye away. The Boar State's looking pretty good here for Pedro now. Has made it through the potential threat of the... Has made it past the potential threat of the... Uh, what is the card? Oh, that's a pretty good hand there though for uh, Galaz. I was going to say like the Greninja. The Greninja threat has been dealt with the Sableye threat is still looming, but there's only the Manaphy on the bench to be taken care of. That is still a prize card, though, and Galaz drew into Roaring Moon, Dark Energy, Mirage Gate, but not much else. Not much else. Has this attack? Little follow-up. Very little follow-up. The Greninja being rise, the Greninja being prized has really put a hurt on... Oh, and the Heavy Ball was the top card! The Heavy Ball was literally the top card, so if you just use Comfy first there... I mean, it's never correct to use Comfy first there, but if Galaz did use Comfy first there... Could have had the heavy ball and has an energy to back up, back it up the the Greninja with the draw power. Goodbye, Roaring, not Roaring Moon, Hoopa Moon, Hoopa Moon. Goodbye, Moon. Goodbye, Hoopa. Sheesh. All right, two prize cards left. A course would pull off the prize card. Greninja is still sleeping, but only needs two prize cards. Pedro is going to need three prize cards after this next turn. So, what are the lines of play here for? Galaz could Sableye KO Manaphy, load up damage on the Radzard, then Radzard gets KO'd by Sableye, or gets KO'd by Sableye, or Cram with the boss. Could boss KO Pidgeot with Raikou? Um, Sableye KO, and I, I mean, from this point on, Pedro can't bench any more little basic Pokemon, I don't think. Cram plus Iron Bundle plus Sableye are the best outs. Cram plus Iron Bundle... Oh, Iron Bundle is pretty good here. Yeah, you could go, right? Because you could go Sableye KO Manaphy, put damage on Radzard, and then Iron Bundle would force up the Pidgeot or the Radzard, which would then die to Raikou or Cram. Uh, Roxanne, though, happening. A lot of cards left in the deck here for Galaz as well, but Roxanne's online. Wants to still really find that Heavy Ball to set up their Greninja. Uh, and there's a Chorus back in the deck as well. Now we got one of those off the prize cards. And you have a couple turns here. You have a couple turns here as... Uh, Galaz, I think you'd love to Sableye this turn, uh, ideally. Cape Manaphy would be epic. Oh, the Cape on the Manaphy would be interesting. That could be the savior here. There is still two Vacuums left for Galaz, but with such a low hand size, Vacuums are going to be hard to play, at least initially. Definitely Stabilize here from, uh, from Pedro. At some point, might want to find that... Um, at some point, you might want to find that... Mist that okay, there it is. <laughs> At some point you might want to find the mist energy. We found the mist energy. The lack of prime catcher is gonna make things tough. Does does Galaz play a counter catcher? Because if Galaz has counter catcher, then you could wait for Pedro to go down to one prize card and then counter catcher Raikou KO the Pidgeot as well. That would also be a play. Pedro's thinking about attacking with the Radzard here instead. Honestly, I don't hate it, because then if they got crammed, then you could just turro it. Um I think he cut it for second vacuum, but I'm not sure. Okay, so maybe only one gust effect here left for Galaz. What do we choose in between here? Gives up a Poffin. Left a Mirage Gate. Retreat to another Comfy here. We're going in. Oh, I guess there's an Iron Hands in hand. The Iron Hands is also a... Possibility. Artisan gives up the artisan. Keeps a nest ball. The nest ball, of course, can become the Raikou. And there's the pass over to Pedro. I wonder if we should have attached active here. Because Pedro could go like vacuum the board and then boss KO the comfy with the energy here. Which honestly doesn't seem like a terrible play. Uh Pedro also like turrowing the Manaphy here seems decent as well. Turo Manaphy seems decent to get that out of play. But I guess if Sableye KO's Manaphy, then you could turbo, Turo the Radzard. But you probably want to Turo sooner than later so you can spam Ionos or Eerie. Uh, also, going with Iono or Eerie here is probably not bad. Um, I guess the big thing would be, should you Eerie and when should you Eerie? Um, yeah, should you Eerie and when should you Eerie? If you can get there, of course. The Eerie's already been used, so the question is... Let's Pedro find Palpad, first of all. I don't know if you're taking two quick searches to go, like, quick search for Palpad and then quick search for Eerie. 
Looks like you'd want to make it happen sooner than then. Also, you need to retreat your Charizard EX at some point and attack with a... No, I guess you don't need to do that. I was going to say, you might want to retreat your Charizard EX and attack with the Radzard. But unless you get punched with Cram, you don't really have to do that, to be honest. I assume Crisis Punch, in, Crisis Punch is something that Galaz does not play. But I guess I don't know for sure. Otherwise, that would be an interesting win condition as well. Would be a Crisis Punch, Cram KO on the Pidgeot. Arvin is the supporter of Choice Return. I assume this is probably going to go get Super Rod. Oh, goes for Vacuum Cape. That's also another reason I would have liked to have seen an energy get attached from Galas. Maybe even an energy attached to the one with the board. But Pedro's going to hit the, the resources here a little bit. Or the uh, flower selecting possibilities a little bit. Attached to the active. Allowing you to retreat to Radzard and then turtle Radzard out of play potentially. Cape going to the Pidgeot. Get it out of... Ooh, oh yeah, that does keep it out of Raikou range. Here comes the vacuum. Get rid of the escape board. There is still the possibility of a one retreat with that bench comb fee. And has the counter catcher, so is doing everything. Is KO removing the board, KOing the one with the pivot. That's what I'm saying. I would like to have seen an energy get attached somewhere. There's a knockout. Okay, so if Galas has a full bench, how much damage are we doing? We're not KOing it. We need to vacuum that cape now as well. Oh, but that's a possibility as well. The Mew is a possibility to one hit KO charge. There's the vacuum already. As the, as the hand gets bigger, though, the area becomes more of a threat. Definitely probably want to vacuum that cape now just to get that out of the way. Man, without without the Prime Catcher anymore, though, it feels like it's going to be impossible to overcome, like, Ionos Bam. We'll see, though. Has the Nest Ball still holding that? I think that's Iron Hands in the hand. Just thinking about vacuuming the Iron Hands. I don't know if, like, Iron Hands KO Manaphy is ever a possibility for a win condition. The cape's got to go here, though. There we go. Vacuum the cape. Two prize cards left for Pedro. No punch into the rat or into the Charizard yet. The hands is gone. So if Pedro just turtles Pidgeot, the game's over, right? I believe. There's the pass. Yeah, Pedro just. Yeah, I think if Pedro just picks up the the Pidgeot, the, there's no win condition. Mew EX wins. Oh, wait, true, true. The Mew EX would win. Does Pedro know about the Mew EX? So the, the correct play is just Iono knockout, right? We definitely just go Iono KO, hopefully. No, you go Iono KO with Radzard, right? Iono KO with Radzard. And then you hope Roxanne isn't found. Roxanne, but it would have to be Roxanne plus Countercatcher. All right, nice. Love to see that. Might be out of Iono. I'm pretty sure he has an Iono left here. Yep, there it is. Iono attack with Radzard. That's going to be tough. What What is... Uh, Gloss basically needs to draw into Roxanne. You do need one more fire energy from, from Pedro to be able to go retreat and then Turo the Radzard and then attack with the Zard again. So might have to get like Super Rod this turn or something. I don't even know. I mean, if there's a fire engine in the deck, you can just go attach fire to the active now. Has Turo in hand, so you could go retreat Super Rod. You could go retreat Super Rod and then quick search for the fire on the next turn. That Turo draw off the Iono should make it pretty easy then, to be honest. Gives up the mist. I guess that also works. You could just discard the mist, actually. I was thinking about discarding two fire, but we don't need to keep the mist anymore, so I guess this does make just more sense. That was go for the Super Rod. I wonder if the Manaphy could have got trapped. We don't put some energy back this turn. But no, we, could have, we have Turo. The Turo always gets us out of it. I guess we don't really need to quick... We don't really need Super Rod here, right? Because you always have Turo to win the game. Turo just wins the game from this point on. Attack, Turo. Attack. There's the knockout. Comfy gets sent up. Pokey gear in hand. That's like... That's what you want. You need to start the sequence with Roxanne, I feel like. Wait, no. You don't have a win condition anymore with Roxanne. Wait, what even is the win condition? We don't have a win condition. I was thinking Roxanne... Well, Roxanne only works if... Charizard was in the active, but Charizard's not in the active. Well, no, no, no. If Galas plays Countercatcher, if Galas plays Countercatcher, then we could win with uh, Roxanne, Countercatcher, Raikou. No, Roxanne, Countercatcher, Mew. 
There's the Roxanne, but goes for the boss on the Charizard. Oh, wait, it is possible. Wait, is it? Nest ball for Mew EX? It is possible. You could attach to Mew EX, and then you can Mew EX into Gate Gate or Gate Switch Cart. Yo, that is a win condition. It's putting all the energy back. Do you really want all the energy? Doesn't is not overly thinking about it. Puts all the energy back into the deck. I don't know if you want. I don't know if you want that. I feel like the gates are more important to hit. There's already a decent amount of energy in the deck. Three energy doesn't feel correct there. This is where you ask for the judge shuffle. There we go. One, two, two supporters that I bought. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you rot all three back there. All right, that could have been an epic win right there. Greninja prize changed this game by far. Yeah, you weren't able to think that the Greninja being prized, lack of draw power, turn after turn. Uh, had pl saw plenty of energy turn after turn after turn. Uh, and then also didn't have the Greninja threat turn two. That would have been pretty good. Um, he had heavy ball. He had heavy ball, but he had no follow up. You play heavy ball like Greninja, you still just pass. Um,. Yeah, getting Greninja set up would have been super nice. It was a close one, though. That was definitely a close one. What's the matchup? Lost Box versus Charizard. Yeah, lack of Greninja was huge, though. Saw so many less cards. The deck was also that much more clumped up with energy as the game progressed. So the draws off the Roxanne and the Ion was following up was, like, that much worse. Um, the decks that play Greninja, Greninja is such a huge part of decks that play Greninja. It's kind of crazy. Like you prize Greninja with Chi and Power or Lost Box, and you feel it feels awful. Um, I do not think Pedro plays Jirachi. No, I, I, Jirachi would have hit the bench sooner. I'm pretty sure if Pedro did play it. Definitely does not play the Jirachi. I think Charger players are gonna have to rethink that moving forward though, because I think we're starting to see Lost Box gain some momentum in the in the meta, and then also Lost Tina as well is out there. I think I think uh, Charizard players are definitely gonna have to rethink the the lack of Jirachi. Should it be over Mist? I don't really know. Do you really want to play Mist Energy and Jirachi? I don't know. Because if I'm a lost box player or a lost Tina player, I would rather my opponent play Mist than Jirachi. I, I want to go against a no Jirachi Zard. I feel like maybe I undervalue Mist Energy too much, but. Ooh. Oh, dude, it's the three chorus this time. Dude. And the boss. Well, the boss being prized is fine because you don't need that till the end of the game. Miss Energy is prized here for Pedro. Galaz chose first. Interesting. Galaz did choose first here. I think definitely going second is, is best, but we'll see how it goes. Also, open the moon, which isn't great because if you take an early knockout, then the Zard player can KO your moon before you actually get to use it. So you really want to have like the threat of Greninja and Sableye early on to kind of hopefully prevent the chasing of your moon or making it kind of irrele irrelevant that they get that two prize knockout. Comfy's coming out. Has Nest Ball in hand. So Greninja is going to be found early here, but really needs to find this one Colrus in the deck ASAP. Does have a vacuum in the hand early on, which is which is gonna hopefully make up for potentially the lack of of Colrus. We'll see. Final checking here. Maybe we'll take note of the lack of Colrus. Hopefully, it does Hazel just got back from winning my first challenge. Got that up with Future Box. Hope to see you in Indy. Trying to decide between Zard and Turbo Hands. What is your opinion between the two? I think Turbo Hands. If your goal is to play Zard. I'm not going to overanalyze it. Are you going first is amazing if you prize three Colrus? That is true. If if you're going to if you're going to go first, the time to go first is when you prize three Colrus to be honest. Glaz being super throw. Glaz realizes there's only one Colrus as well. Check the Colrus count there. <laughs> and there is just one. You know, I've had these exact ha situations happen with Lost Zone before, and if you just hit that first chorus, you're fine. Well, the Ionos do start to hurt if 
I'll, we assume you pull one off the prize cards, which I'm pretty sure Glods will pull that Colrus first off prizes. Uh, and if you can find that Colrus, or you don't get Iono on that turn, then you're good. All right. Hopefully he has a switch here as well. There's the switch. Okay. We're doing all right now. Takes a gate. Loses a switch. I mean, gates are pretty important, but... Doesn't have another energy to use Greninja with here either, though. Loses another switch. Does get the, the energy for the concealed card, so it's probably worth. Need to keep digging. There's the chorus. We found the chorus. And pass over to Pedro. Be unfortunate if Pedro plays Iono as supporter for turn, because then it's on the bottom of the deck. So we need to shuffle the deck before we start digging. We need plus one card there to make things happen. I do see an Arvin in hand, though, so we'll probably see the Arvin here from Pedro, and it is the Arvin. Poffin and Four Seal Stone, if it's not prized, are on the way. But did line up the gate there, so Four Seal Stone might be, well, might be prized or it might be in the hand. We'll see. Does it matter what order you pick prize cards in IRL settings? It doesn't, but the only reason to pick your prize cards out of order would be if you're cheating, so there's no reason to pick your prize cards out of order if even if you're not cheating. So what are your thoughts about should we know our prize cards to not lose time in prize checking? I'm pretty indifferent on it, Pedro. I don't advocate it though for it, though, because I feel like People are lazy about checking their prize cards. So it would hurt my potential win percentage in tournaments if we drew seven, set a basic, drew six, looked at them, shuffled them, and laid them as prize cards. So my win percent would fall because I check my prize cards. And then everyone who's lazy and doesn't check their prize cards, win rate would or would, would match mine or would go up, not match mine because of that. So I don't advocate for it, but if Pokemon came out tomorrow and was like, you now draw seven, set your basic, and then before you set your prize cards out, you look at them and then put them down. I wouldn't complain. Like I'd be like, all right, that's fine. But I don't advocate for it because currently uh, people are lazy and don't check their prize cards. So I currently have an advantage. So I don't advocate for it, but I'm not against it, I guess. All right, the whole squad showing up for Pedro in this game and then going with that roadie for three. Has the cape in hand and was thinking about putting it in play I wonder when the best time to put... Where did, where should this cape go? It seems like it's best on the bird. So putting it down now to prevent a cram KO kind of makes sense, right? Also, it makes the potential of a Sableye KO more awkward. The Sableye KO at this point is pretty unlikely. And to be honest, looking at this board state, this is why you want to go second in this matchup. So I'm definitely going to... I'm definitely going to say Galaz made a mistake here by choosing to go first. Like, this is only possible through Arvin for Poffin. Pedro's hand is literally Nest Ball. If... Pedro goes first. Nest Ball Manaphy. Which is way worse than this. Um, yeah. I feel like every time I like question whether or not you want to go second against Charizard or want to go second with Charizard, you like I like watch or play one game and I'm like, yep, I'm glad I went second. Or yep, I definitely want to go second. All right, Heavy Ball hit in the zone. Prime Catcher is in the hand, so there was a potential for the Cram, the Cram Prime KO the Pidgey, which would have been pretty decent, I think, to kind of set the tone here, set the pace. Um, now we might just see, like, Galaz try and reach for, like, Cram Knockout Active. Picking between, I think, Mew and a Super Rod here on the next this next Lost Zone. Super Rod gonna go. Let's play four of them, but I don't know. Was there one or two couple? Was there a couple of them prized? Is that why Galaz is in the tank on that one? Here comes the Concealed Cards first. Like I said, we're probably settling for a cram knockout here, but a couple gates in the hand. I do see a nest ball. I don't think I see a way to retreat to a cram, though. So I don't know if we should have Greninja before Comfy there. Roxanne's gone. That's a big That's a big card to close out games with combos. I think Galaz is just going to get this prize card here with a cram. Does have the prime catcher, but... um. Oh, wait. You can... There's the cape. You could vacuum the cape. Wait, is it... Prime catcher's pretty good. I think you could you still vacuum the cape maybe no matter what. But do you go KO it? I think you should definitely vacuum this turn. Get rid of the cape while you have it before it gets Iono'd. 
get plus one in your loss zone. But do we prime catcher it? I don't think Galaz is too sure either. You could attach retreat, take the knockout. Prime catcher is such a good card. But there's always a chance that you're... And you just telegraphed you have prime catcher, I feel like, there for sure. Oh, we get one more comfy here as well. That's kind of chill. And there's always, like, the threat of Eerie as well, I feel like, right? Like, there's always the possibility you you get Eerie and just lose your Prime Catcher anyways. Um, yeah, but there's a the knockout. Goes for the Pidgey knockout. No clue if it's correct. Also, didn't draw a Colrus. There's three Colrus in the prize card still. The Laws might struggle to draw another prize card here, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's possible Glaz struggles to draw a prize card. Because you need to get to 10 to get to Sableye. There's only seven in the loss zone here. Um, and did has ditched three switch cards. Could have maybe loss on the lightning energy instead of loss zoning. Could maybe loss on the lightning energy, honestly, instead of loss the switch card. To try and build up to that build up to that 10 a little bit more quickly. Because Sableye seems like a big factor in this current situation. Pretty good hand from Pedro. Here comes the Charizard. One to the active, or two to the active. Has the B-barrel in there as well. Doesn't have the Pidgeot to work with, but looking pretty good. He lost on to Poffin. No, on the last comb, he lost on to Switch Card. Yeah, it has Moon on Bench. And he has Moon on Bench. Oh, shoot. We do have Moon on Bench. Okay, all right. You're right. You're right. We do have Moon. We do have Moon. And Pedro did prize the Miss Energy. So there's no, there's no potential of the Miss Energy. <clears throat> there's the Four Seal Stone as well. But the Miss Energy is prized. So the Moon is actually... Well, wait. Is our... <laughs> actually, our Moon's dead. <laughs> No, bro. Pedro got it all. Ar he drew into the Arvin, bro. He has candy second Zard, bro. What the heck? He has everything. Yeah, we need 10. We need Sableye KLB barrel. We need Sableye KLB barrel here. That's like our only route back here for Galaz. Dude, holy smokes. He has, well, I assume he plays Defiance. I'm pretty sure he plays Defiance. So he's going to go, he can go Defiance Counter Catcher or Defiance Prime Catcher, KO the Moon. Which I'm assu assuming is what we'll see here. <laughs> Even Glass gla scr scratching his head is like, what? Are you sure? You have that? Hasn't even played a supporter yet. I don't think Defiance Band is prized. Oh yeah, no Prime Catcher, it's Cape. So it is Counter Catcher, Counter Catcher Defiance. <laughs> yep, here's Arvin. Defiance counter on the way. Jeez, bro. That's an in insane... Oh, wait. Eyeing up a Poffin. Antium Devo? Maybe not. No, def oh, is a counter catcher in the hand? Bro, he doesn't even have to work for these cards. Gets to get Pidgey reestablished as well. Catcher in prizes? Oh, is Prime Catcher prize? Okay, maybe there's hope then. Maybe there's hope. If the if the counter catcher's prize, there's definitely some hope here. Well, actually, honestly, the Pidgey, I don't know if I like that Pidgey coming down. Um Four Seal Stone's not used, but there actually might not be. Never mind. <laughs> but see, the Pidgey bench is interesting because this opens up a good Sableye turn. This is a good Sableye turn from Galaz then. I don't know if I like that Pidgey bench here. Now you can go KO Manaphy KO Pidgey into Sableye KO B barrel. Um, I'm not sure about that one, to be honest. We could have just not benched Pidgey, right? He plays two counter. Oh, okay. So two counter. Got to get to 10, though. We're a little ways away. I see it stabilizes in the hand right now, I think. We're getting close. We're just not quite there. Has force for whatever he wants, though. Yeah, but you don't want to put a Raikou in play. Well, yeah, actually. Oh, no. On Pedro's side, you mean. That's a switch. That's a big deal. All right, this gets us to 10, but then we need to get the Sableye in the active, which I think is the, the trouble. Do we get a switch card here? And Galaz has already lost on a lot of switch cards, which I was questioning a little bit, but it's coming down, so it's, we got to have it here. Okay. All right, let's go. Galaz has the response. Goes after the B-barrel. I don't hate it. Um, Colas was pulled off the prize cards. 
I don't hate there's two candy gone that was Pedro's draw power. I don't hate it. Obviously, if B barrel is set up here or if Pidgeot is set up here, it looks sketch. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is a fine play. Now there's the missed energy to protect it. There goes an Iono. Doesn't have candy Pidgeot yet. Yeah, I'm not I definitely don't hate it. I like I kinda in my head I was like, I like the Manaphy plus Pidgey. Or the Manaphy plus Manaphy, or the Pidgey plus Manaphy knockout, and then try and get Sableye back, and then you Sableye to KO B barrel. Um, and then look for a moon KO on one of the two prizers. We'll see how it goes. So I see a red candy in the hand there for Pedro. Oh wait, and has four seal stone. Um all right, with the idea that four seal stone is still active, I think you KO the Pidgey. Ah. Uh... Does Galaz ever want the Pidgeot in play? It's like, does Galaz want to be like, all right, I'm going to KO your B barrel. So now you, for you to play the game, for you to have a consistency engine on the next turn, you need to set up Pidgeot. Is that ever Galaz's thought process here? I want the Pidgeot in play. I don't think so, right? Because if I got to choose as Pedro, I'd want Pidgeot over B barrel as well, right? Not a huge, um, not a huge fan of it. Yeah, Gloss finally finds a course and it does get uh <laughs> it does get Iona away. <clears throat> Gloss gets kind of cooked by mist on bib if it goes for two KOs. That that would be pretty good. I'm not yeah, I'm not gonna lie. The mist on the bib would be pretty good. But you're more likely to be able to find the mist. That's not true. I guess you have four seal stone. You do have four seal stone. Yeah, I kind of agree, Pedro. The uh, watching these games makes Countercatcher look really good for Galaz. <laughs> watching these games play out makes Countercatcher look really, really good. Cause like right here, you could like look for uh Moon Knockout active into Raikou KO. I mean, it's still rough because you're gonna get like I don't. Well, no, if you move or you could like Raikou KO Pidgeot to stop the possibility of a hand disruption. To be honest, with like Countercatcher KO Pidgeot here would be pretty good. To be honest. Oh, wait a second. How hard is the Hoopa hitting? That's the Hoopa, right? Is it ever doing enough? 250? You could KO the Roadie with it. Is that Ops for the Artisan? So Galaz here could go Sableye, KO Manaphy, put the rest on Rotom, and then Sableye again, KO Rotom, right? But use the Artisan immediately without super routing Sableye back. Maybe just wants to shuffle the deck to try and find the chorus that was on the bottom. That's reasonable. We also still have the out of Mew one hit KO at Charizard, right? Oh wait, that's always a possibility too. So if we had, if we get Roaring Moon knockout here, I feel like we're in an okay spot, right? Eh. No, because then we're just gonna get Radzarded probably. But we have to get Radzard Ionode. And the prime catcher being down just kind of sucks. Prime catcher being gone sucks. That card is such a big deal for making comebacks. Horus is found. Moon knockout looks like the the necessary play here from Galaz, to be honest. This is why prime catcher turn one was horrible. Yeah, I don't know if I liked it either, Pedro. I wasn't really sure. You're always scared of the thing. I think I think the thing with item cards in this matchup is you're always kind of scared of Eerie, but you just I don't think you could you can't always play in fear of Eerie and like just play every you can't play everything all the time. So you got to put yourself in like a good middle ground spot where it's like if they Eerie, I can still win. This means they're not doing other stuff. Um, but you also need stuff to win the game as well. Also in that situation as well, Galaz had like two or three gates and the prime catcher. So it's like you only get so much off the Eerie anyways. All right, does Galaz actually have any kind of knockout? I think you need something here from Galaz. I see a super rod. I don't see an out to a basic Pokemon, though. Cram Punch is never enough, right? Cram Punch active is never enough. Is eyeing up Moon and Sableye. There's no way to find a Pokemon, though. 
Going in with another Comfy. Needs to find like a Nest Ball. Because the Artisan's already been used. Like Sableye would be a fine attacker here, but Artisan's already been used to shuffle the deck. I wonder if Galaz could have afforded to not use the Artisan initially until looking for a Super Rod. Bundles down. I don't know what that is. Four Sealstone up. Four Sealstone's not good enough. And there's a Concede from Galaz. Yeah, I don't mind the Concede there. I th you needed a bigger play. <laughs> Showing Pedro the two courses still remaining in the prize cards after taking one off of them. And yeah, Pedro gets the dub. I would like to have seen like a little bit. We didn't get to see like a super clean draw. Or